Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the second video on financial statements. This is part two, where we are going to look at the ratios that goes together with the financial statements. We are going to start with a recap of the previous video. I'm going to pin the video up there and you can go through you know, the financial statements. So the income statement, quick recap, starts with revenue. We deduct the cost of sales and that gets us to the gross profit. All the operating expenses gets us to the operating profit. We deduct interest, we deduct tax, and it tells us if the company made a profit or loss. Then we move over to the balance sheet. On the balance sheet, we discussed short-term assets and long-term assets. Just some examples of short-term assets. We have our cash, debtors, and the stock. On the long-term assets, we have stuff like property, plant, and equipment. So the fixed assets that we're going to use over the long-term. And we have some long-term investments. On the flip side of the balance sheet, we have our current liabilities. So the short-term liabilities like creditors and borrowings. And then on the long-term liabilities, we have long-term borrowings and the money of the shareholders. So we are going to use the income statement and the balance sheet as our base for the ratios that we are going to calculate. A quick summary of the ratios. You are going to see that we have two income statement ratios. So those are pure income statement ratios. You only need the income statement. Then we have three balance sheet ratios, which is the quick ratio, the current ratio, and the debt to equity ratio. You only need the balance sheet. It gets a little bit more complicated when we go to the bottom row. These are combination ratios. So the return on equity and the return on assets, we're going to look at those quickly. They combine numbers from the income statement and the balance sheet. And then we have three more ratios. Now, why do I call them additional? I call them additional because you need numbers that are not on the income statement or balance sheet. For earnings per share, you need the number of shares. For the price to sales and the price to earnings, which are valuation metrics, you need the market cap of the company. Now, let's jump in to our very first ratio. It's called the gross margin. When you see gross margin, it means that the, when you see the word margin, it means that the number was divided by revenue. So any number on the income statement, if they divide it by revenue, it's called margin. So you can have a gross profit margin, you can have an operating margin, or you can have a net profit margin. Any number divided by the revenue is called margin. Now, why do we do this? Why do we divide a number by revenue? That tells you how profitable something is because you divide it by the income that the item produces, shows you how profitable the item is. Now with gross margin, because you are only deducting the direct cost. In the previous video, I explained to you that if you are baking bread, if you are selling bread, the only thing that you're deducting from to get to the gross profit are the ingredients to make the bread. So what does that show you? It shows you how profitable the product is, the product in itself. If you're making cars, only the parts to make the car. You want to see how profitable the product in itself is. That is gross profit over revenue. Now, very simple. Now we get to the net profit margin. You want to see how profitable the company is because now you are dividing the net profit by the revenue. You've taken all the expenses, operating expenses, interest, and tax into account. That tells you how profitable the company is. Now we get to the balance sheet ratios. Let's start with the quick ratio. The quick ratio is your liquid assets over current liabilities. Let me show you a trick. How do you get to liquid assets? Your liquid assets is anything that is cash or near cash, okay? It, it, when you see the word liquid, it means money. 
okay? Quick. What we do is we take the current assets and we deduct the stock. The stock hasn't been sold yet. You don't know if you're gonna sell it. So it's not liquid. What is liquid? Your cash and your datas. So just take your current assets and deduct the inventory. That's your liquid assets. Put it over your current liabilities. And that's how you see how quickly can the company kill the current liabilities. If you have $200 in liquid assets and $100 in current liabilities, that means you can kill your short-term assets two times. How, what do you want this ratio to be? You want this ratio bigger than one. The norm in the industry is people normally want it between 1.5 to 2.5. If the number is also too high, it's not good. It means the company is sitting on lazy cash, cash that they haven't invested somewhere else or done something with. So you also don't want a, a ratio of five or 10 or 20. That's not good. Company needs to manage it. Now let's get to the current ratio. All you do now is you just take the total current assets over the current liabilities. This is also commonly known as the liquidity ratio of the company, current assets over current liabilities. We just want this number higher than one. Now we move to the last ratio on the balance sheet and that is called debt to equity. I showed you in the previous video that the money from the shareholders versus the money from the banks. We don't want our companies getting more money from the banks than they do from us. If you have debt of 100, you want equity of 200. That gives you a 50% debt to equity ratio. That's a very safe number. Now let's look at, now we get to the combination ratios where you take a number from the income statement and you take a number from the balance sheet. What is this? Return on equity. Accounting is very simple. Um, it's all in the words, okay? So it means the profit percentage on the shareholders' money. So how much did this money make for its shareholders? 5%, 10%, 12%. You can only, once something is in the ratio format, you can compare it to another company. Then the very next ratio, the same, but we take the profit over the total assets of the company. And that tells us how hard is this company working the assets? If we want a company that's working the assets really well, that gives us maybe 10%, 12%, 15%. You won't know what the right number is. If it's in ratio format, you can now go and compare it to other companies. So if you have Chevron returning 10% and you have Exxon returning 15%, you will know which one is the better one because it's now in the ratio formats and you can see which one of those oil companies are working their assets harder. And we want a higher return on assets. This number is a very important number. Now the accountants do calculate earnings per share. Again, earnings is just another word for profits. So it's the net profit per share. So it's net profit over the number of shares. And companies calculated, you can often find it at the bottom of the income statement, or you can also find it in the notes to the financial statements. And that's just the profit per share, the higher, the better. The price to sales ratio. Again, with accounting, everything is in the name. The price, that's the share price that you pay over the sales per share. So you can either do this ratio, the total market cap of the company, which means the total market value of the business over the total revenue of the business. If you do the ratio per share, then you have to put the price that you pay or the share price above the line and the revenue per share below the line. It gives you exactly the same answer. The one is just total and the other one is per share, it will give you exactly the same answer. What does this ratio tell you? This ratio is a valuation metric. It's a way of comparing one company to the other. You want this ratio as low as possible. It, it honestly tells you how fast will the company make my money back in annual revenue. So if the company, if you pay 
300 rand for the share and they make 50 revenue in a year. That means you're going to wait six years for the company to make your money back in sales. A company where you pay 300 and the revenue is 300, you are going to wait one year for that company. Obviously, you want the company to make your money back faster. Now, the next ratio is exactly the same as the price to sales, but you put the profit at the bottom. Now, you'll often hear people talk about PE. PE is stronger. Why is earnings stronger? Because revenue, you haven't deducted anything from revenue yet. Revenue is purely the number at the top of the income statement. Earnings is stronger because you've deducted everything. Earnings belongs to the shareholders of the business. But this ratio is only useful if it is positive. Let me explain myself. If we say, how fast will the company make my money back in profits? If the company is loss making, you can't wait negative years. That's why we default to the price to sales ratio, especially for growth stocks. Companies that are loss making, we compare them to their peers using the price to sales. Price to earnings, the stronger ratio, we use it for value stocks, we use it for our dividend stocks, and we can see which company is cheaper if we compare, let's say, Apple to Amazon, or if we compare Walmart to Home Depot, et cetera. So that is, that's the 10 ratios. It, it's very simple. Um, if you need to make a screenshot of this, please do, but this is a summary. We have our two income statement ratios, our three balance sheet ratios. We've got two combination ratios, return on equity and return on assets. And then we have the earnings per share, which you can find in the financial statements, or you can calculate it yourself. The higher, the better. And then we have price to sales and price to earnings, which are valuation metrics. The lower, the better. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys find this a little bit easier. Um, I know it's not going to stick the first time around for, especially if you're not an accountant, watch it a few times. And if you have any questions, you know, pop them in the comments below. I try to respond to every single question.